One of Brighton's most eerie incident is the murder case known as The Babes in the Wood Murders. Sadly, the case went unsolved for more than 30 years until new evidence was eventually discovered. Hello and welcome to Mystery Detective. Please support my channel by subscribing and hitting the bell icon for more crime cases. The Babes in the Wood Murders revolves around the killings of two nine-year-old girls named Nicola, Fellows and Karen Hadaway. Despite attending different schools, Nicola and Karen were great friends who lived on the same street in Molescombe, Brighton, Sussex, England. On October 9, 1986, after school hours were over around 3.30pm, the girls decided to go play. Around 5 o'clock, Nicola's mother, Susan Fellows, saw them playing with a roller boot on the street, not knowing that would be the last time she would see the girls alive. Nicola and Karen moved away from their street and were soon spotted by a 14-year-old friend near certain stores on Lewis Road. They were then ordered to return home, since their parents would be concerned about their whereabouts. At 6.30pm, the girls were also seen close to a police box in Lewis Road. And that was the last time anyone ever saw them alive. Night came, and it was time for bed. But neither Fellows nor Hadaway had arrived home. Their families became worried. Karen Hadaway's mother, Michelle Hadaway, immediately dialed 999 to report the two girls missing. The police and hundreds of people from Molescombe commenced a massive search for the girls when words of their disappearance spread. In the course of searching, a witness came forward to report that they heard Nikolai Fellows allegedly telling Karen Hadaway the evening they were last seen to go to the park. In her words, Nicola said, Come on. Let's go over to the park, referring to Wild Park, where they were not permitted. On hearing this, the search party then focused their attention on finding the girls in the Wild Park. On the afternoon of October 10, 1986, Nicola Fellows and Curran Hadaway's bodies were discovered in Wild Park. The girls were discovered in a makeshift cave, and an autopsy later proved that they had been sexually molested and strangled. The babes in the wood murders shook the whole of Brighton. Molescombe residents wondered who could have wickedly assaulted and murdered the two lovable girls. The Sussex police began an investigation into the case, and shortly after, witnesses came forward to say they had seen a young man named Russell Bishop near the same police box in Lewis Road, where the girls had been seen. They confirmed he was wearing what appeared to be a light blue top, which the police would later discover near the crime scene. Another witness came forward to say they saw Russell Bishop leaving the Wild Park around 6.30pm. By now, the police had a suspect. They tracked down Russell Bishop and took him into custody on October 31, 1986, in relation to the girls' killings. This came after he was questioned and he gave a number of contradictory statements and alibis. On December 3, 1986, Bishop was accused with the murder of Nikolai Fellows and Karen Hadaway. He was held in detention, pending a trial the following year. Before his arrest, Russell Bishop, a 20-year-old roofer and occasional burglar, was a part of that search team who looked for the girls. During the search, he said that his terrier Misty was such a superb tracker dog that it had a £17,000 insurance policy. Russell Bishop was well known in Molescombe despite residing in the nearby Brighton neighbourhood of Hollingdon. He appeared to have connections to the families of the girls he murdered. A friend of his, Doey Judd, was staying with the fellow's family at the time. Bishop often participated in football and cricket games with Barry Fellows, the father of Nicola Fellows. Even the day the girls vanished, he went to Nikolai Fellows' house in an attempt to speak with his friend who lodged there, but was told to leave by Nicola Fellows. Both sets of parents urged their girls to avoid Russell Bishop because he was known for having a sexual interest in young girls. Then again, Bishop would often ask them to run errands for him and Jenny Johnson, his pregnant girlfriend. Despite sharing a home with his girlfriend and their son, he was rumoured to have a long history of relationships. At the time of the murders, Bishop was having an affair with a 16-year-old who lived around the block from the girls. Russell Bishop's strong ties to the search of the girls ultimately led to his downfall. He was said to have prompted officers towards the area where Nikolai and Karen were discovered. The trial came and, unfortunately, 
Russell Bishop was found not guilty in the first trial in 1987, which was largely the result of mistakes made by the prosecution team. Despite a four-week trial at Lewis Crown Court, Russell Bishop was acquitted of the girl's rape and murder after barely two hours of jury deliberations. No time of death could be given because the body's temperatures weren't taken, making it impossible to know with certainty when Nikolai Fellows and Karen Hadaway passed away. As a result, the prosecution was only able to allege that the girls had been slain between 6.15 and 6.30 p.m., which was not supported by scientific evidence. This left Russell Bishop's vague and inconsistent alibis unquestioned. Also, the blood found on Karen Hadaway's underpants were never analysed, and the handprints around the girls' necks were not examined for fingerprints or hand measurements. Furthermore, a blue Pinto sweatshirt with the same logo as the one Russell Bishop was seen wearing the day of the murder was also found abandoned close to the crime scene, but the police's negligence to keep the evidence safe prompted the defense to question its credibility. Bishop insisted during the trial that the blue shirt was not his. Although Bishop's then-girlfriend Jenny Johnson told police that the cloth was his, she, however, denied it when she entered the witness box. After the back and forth at the court with no well-researched evidence, the jury followed the instructions of the presiding judge, Justice Cheeseman, to acquit unless they were absolutely certain that the girls had passed away by 6.30pm. The lack of sufficient evidence got Russell Bishop out of jail. In 2009, Barry Fellows, Nikolai's father, was arrested on suspicion of conspiracy to rape his daughter. Dougie Judd, Bishop's friend, was also detained on a rape suspicion. They, however, were later freed without charges when a Sussex police spokesman claimed that the investigation into allegations of sexual abuse was separate to the ongoing murder probe. The investigators at the time worked tirelessly to pinpoint the killer, but since there was no advancement in DNA technology in the 1980s, there was nothing much they could do and so. The babes in the wood murders went cold for over three decades. On the 30th anniversary of the Nikolai Fellows and Karen Hadaway's murder, family and friends matched to the Sussex Police Department, demanding a reopening and re-examination of the case. In the year 2016, when there was advancement in DNA technology, the investigators were finally able to link the strange DNA samples at the crime scene to Russell Bishop. Eurofin's Forensic Services was able to identify a billion-to-one DNA match that connected Bishop to the discarded blue shirt. Additionally, a tape pulled from Karen Hadaway's left arm contained Bishop's DNA. The police had always believed Russell Bishop was the suspect but didn't have enough evidence at the time to prosecute him. However, when he committed a similar crime in 1990, they started looking for means to confirm that he was the one who had perpetrated the babes in the Woods murders. Four years after the girl's murder, in the year 1990, Russell Bishop was arrested and charged for a horrific attack on a seven-year-old Brighton girl. It happened that on the 1st of February 1990, he had grabbed the seven-years-old girl off the street, locked her in the boot of his car, and driven to Devil's Dyke, where she had been abused, strangled, and then left for dead in a bush. By some miracle, she made it to the side of the road where she was found by people who rescued her. Later, the victim was able to identify Russell Bishop as the person who attacked her. Later in 1990, he was charged with the crime which seemed identical to the babes in the Woods murders. Bishop was remanded to prison while awaiting trial. During his trial, Russell Bishop was found guilty of kidnapping indecent assault and attempted murder in December of that same year. He was then given a life sentence with a minimum recommended duration of 14 years before he would be eligible for release. This crime of his prompted investigators to look deeper into Nicola Fellows and Karen Hadaway's murder case. A new trial was held more than 30 years after the girl's murders as a result of the discovery of the new evidence against Russell Bishop, which was made possible by the 2005 removal of the double jeopardy rules from the provisions of the Criminal Justice Act of 2003. In May 2016, Russell Bishop was escorted from his jail cell to a police station, where he was subsequently arrested again for the killings of Karen Hadaway and Nikolai Fellows.
the 1987 acquittals were overturned by a ruling issued by the Court of Appeal in December 2017, paving the way for a fresh trial. Russell Bishop's trial at the Old Bailey took place in October 2018. Thanks to technological advancements, the prosecution produced a fresh timeline that indicated the girls were still alive at 6.30pm and that Bishop had gone back into Wild Park to complete what he started. On December 10, 2018, Bishop was ultimately found guilty of his charges. After a nine-week trial and a two and a half hours of deliberation, the jury returned a guilty verdict. The families of Nikolai Fellows and Karen Hadaway ultimately received justice when Russell Bishop was given a life sentence with a minimum recommended time of 36 years. However, at the age of 55, he passed away from cancer on January 20, 2022.